So just to be sure you're in the right session, we're here to talk about splunking IBM I data. I'm Chip Sutton. I'm part of the R&D team at SyncSort, where we provide solutions for mainframe and IBM I integration into different leading platforms. My co-speaker today is Brian Brake from Cox Automotive. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll let Brian introduce himself when he gets to his part of the presentation. So today I hope we can answer some questions about get, getting IBM I data into Splunk. For example, why would you want to do it? Why would you want to add data into Splunk? <clears throat> and what kind of data can you collect from IBM I systems and put that data into Splunk? And then how long does it take? Is it easy to do? Is it going to take a long time, something that you'll spend a lot of time doing? And then once you get the data into Splunk, what can you do with it? The data that you do that. And then I'll turn it over to Brian, and he'll talk to you about how to incorporate IBM I data in a day-to-day -day workflow and how they're doing that at Cox Automotive today. <clears throat> So, who's familiar with the term IBM I? It's a relatively new term. Anybody heard IBM I before? What about AS400? So now we're see we're testing your age to see how far you go back with the IBM systems. I series. Anybody remember when it was called I series or System I? That didn't last very long, but it was called System I for a while. And then Power System. So a number of different names that these systems have been known by. People we talk to still call it AS400 or I-Series. But the latest IBM nomenclature for the system today is IBM I. So if you're familiar with these, chances are you have, have these systems in your enterprise. If you've heard of them, systems running the operating system, which used to be called OS 400 or I5 IS, I5 OS, now <coughs> simply called IBM iOS, not to be confused with what runs on your phone of iOS. So Splunk, <coughs> you know, just by the fact that you're here at a Splunk conference, you know Splunk is a great tool for looking at applications, operating systems, network data, all kinds of security data that you get from different systems and a lot, but it does it for all these systems today except for the IBM I systems, right? So most people think, you know, these IBM systems like the mainframe, the IBM I, I series, AS400 are systems that are, that are going away, but in reality, they're still, according to current statistics, over 100,000 companies that are using IBM I systems to run their different applications, many of which are very critical applications in industries such as banking, healthcare, automotive industry, and uh, many others. And actually, according to surveys, about one third of these companies say that 75% of their critical workload runs on these IBM I systems. So they're the backbone of many critical applications in the enterprise. So they're a very important part of enterprise applications and important to be looked at. So today with Splunk, all these different systems that you get data from today, from you know, cloud, you know, network systems, Linux, Unix, Windows, all the different systems that you can get by using typical Splunk forwarder technology to get data into Splunk, except you have that wall, that brick wall between the IBM I systems and the data that you can get in Splunk today. So what we'll talk about is how do we get rid of that wall? Take that wall down, get the data from those IBM I systems into Splunk so that you have a complete view of everything that's going on in your enterprise infrastructure. So you're probably thinking what kind of data can I get from my IBM I system. So a lot of it is going to be data similar to what you get from other systems. For example, if you're collecting syslog data, Windows event type, event log type data 
on the IBM I system, that same type of data is going into a message queue. So there's a system operator message queue. There could be applications that have their own message queues that are writing important event type data, as well as third party products that you may use that also have their own message queues. All of these are basic candidates for data that you would want to collect and put into Splunk. Many, many of you are interested in security, getting security data along, you know, that you get today from other systems. Getting that data from the IBM I system comes from the Security Audit Journal. It provides system-wide auditing type data, auditing for specific objects, so you may be doing auditing, for example, if you've got sensitive files, so if, if you're, you know, HR type files, ERP type files that may be sensitive, you need to control access to those files. You may be doing that through object auditing on the IBM I system. Or you may be interested in auditing for specific users. So any type of compliance reporting that you may need to do would typically come from the audit journal. Performance. Performance data is always important to look at in terms of doing operations analytics. Uh, we have different options to be able to get performance data from the IBM I system, like system level summary type data or detailed data that comes from the IBM I collection services, which provides very detailed performance data. Also, you may be wanting to get information from your application, such as understanding field level changes or being able to audit field level changes for different applications and files that are being journaled give you the ability to do this. And then the final one there, the system accounting journal events to be able to look at uh, accounting to see what users, what applications are using the most resources on an IBM I system. <clears throat> so you may be thinking, well, Splunk doesn't have a forwarding agent for IBM I, so how do we get this data in there? The company that I work for, SyncSort, has a family of products called IronStream. IronStream was actually introduced a number of years ago, actually at one of the Splunk conferences for the IBM mainframe to ingest data. With the acquisition of eView Technology, which is a company I came from, we also brought the same capability that IronStream had for mainframe data going into Splunk for the IBM I systems. So this allows you to basically take advantage of the Splunk enterprise system you've got to be able to include the IBM I system. It's an agent-based solution where an agent runs on the different IBM I systems to gather the different types of data that you want to collect. It's designed to be low overhead on the agent and basically push that data over to be able to go into Splunk and provide some filtering mechanism so you do have some control over what data gets sent over to your Splunk system. So the integration works by using what we call a collector server that sits in between the IBM I system and your Splunk indexer. What this does is takes advantage of the capability of using a Splunk forwarder on a supported platform such as Windows or Linux and collect that IBM I data via TCP IP connection from the agent on there and send that data over to the Splunk indexer. So the filtering capabilities allow you to eliminate noise so you can select what types of data you want to have sent over. Uh, if you're using a heavy forwarder in, in, as opposed to a universal forwarder, you can even do further filtering to further reduce the amount of data that goes into Splunk. So if there's data that you never plan to use in Splunk, have no use case for, then you can do that kind of filtering. The uh, agent technology between the collector and the agent uses a protocol that allows us to be able to detect any time data cannot be delivered to the collector server. So that data will get buffered, uh, so that we have a guaranteed delivery. So the data can be buffered at the agent if it can't be delivered to the collector, and then the data is then written to disk on the collector server so that if there's any 
problem with the forwarder sending data to Splunk, and then that data still is available on the forwarder so that you don't lose data. So we'll talk just about a few different use cases before Brian gets up and uh, talks about uh, real life use of this product in the, in the Cox Automotive environment. So some different use cases would be for message queue or history data to be able to, to look at trends, to do things like proactive analysis, you know, where you might look for things like long running jobs, you know, hardware errors, application issues, uh, and any type of issue that might need to be analyzed or alerted on. Security, for those that are interested in security, looking at security data, bringing that data into Splunk along with the other security data, a uh, number of different use cases there from the IBM I type systems, looking at things like authorization failures where someone who does not have access to a particular type of object and is trying to access that object or, or login attempts, failed login attempts, looking at uh, things, user profile events, especially in the IBM I system where things uh, can run with something called adopted authority, looking at, uh, at, at where this is used, uh, system value changes, of course if somebody changes system values on the system which control how the system works, how security might work on the system, obviously something that you would need to be aware of uh, or any kind of changes to any kind of sensitive files. Performance data, we have a number of different ways to get performance data. Uh, the agent has a built-in capability to get system level performance data uh, and feed that data into Splunk. But uh, in our latest release, we've added the ability to get data from the IBM I collection services, which many people are running on their IBM I systems. Uh, that provides a much more granular, detailed level of data from the IBM I systems, and you have the ability to collect that data so that you have data on not only things like CPU, disk, memory, uh, but you can then get into detailed data for things like job performance where you can look at jobs that, uh, that are using unusual amounts of CPU time, for example. So one last uh, use case example, and this is a case of looking at, for example, application files where we have the ability to monitor the journals for application files and be able to get information, for example, field level changes. So uh, you may have a need based on auditing requirements to be able to identify changes or who made changes to different application files to be able to look at, for example, a before and after change or look for any kind of anomalies in, in field changes. So by taking the journal information from these application files where you can look at the before and after image, then you can very easily use the capabilities of SPL to find that type of information. So here's just a simple example with a little made up payroll file here where looking for somebody changing a salary value by a certain percentage and being able to identify. So changes to any type of field you could easily monitor for in Splunk. So now I'm going to turn it over to Brian. Brian will talk about uh, the Cox Automotive story. Thank you, Chip. Appreciate it. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Brian Brake. I'm from Cox Automotive. If you guys didn't figure that out, uh, I'm the second guy on the second slide. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our success story with uh, Iron Stream um, and a couple different use cases that we use it for every day. So a little bit, oh, that's the wrong way. A little bit about Cox Automotive. Um, I'm not really good at reading slides, you guys can read that, but we're a very large company. We do vehicle life cycles. So anything that happens to happen or has to happen with the vehicle from the birth of the vehicle to the death of the vehicle, we provide services all the way in between. Wholesale, retail, salvage, finance, you name it, we do it. 
Uh, and we happen to have 120 of these IBM AS400, IBM I series uh, running in our environment and they provide a very core function for our business. For a very long time they were running what we call our auction operating system which is the core of all of our brick and mortar transactions. They originated there and they ended there. Uh, and that's really still in place today. We built a ton of services on top of these IBM I uh, to retrieve the data, send data back, uh, present data to the customer, uh, send it to other operational data stores, message queues, so on and so forth and I'll show a picture of that in a second. Uh, we're currently a Splunk Cloud customer, a uh, Splunk ES customer, an ITSI customer. Uh, we're anywhere from 8 to 10 terabytes a day. We have 400 active users a day, 5,000 users that have hit our system since we've had it. Uh, so we're a pretty large customer. Uh, we use Splunk for a whole lot of different things. This is going to just going to cover a couple of you cases that we use uh, Splunk with IBM I. So here's the picture on the left of a lot of infrastructure and architecture and software on the right hand side of the picture and in the red circle is the core of where that tra transactional data comes from. Our IBM I, AS400 I series stuff. So off of those systems and we have one at every one of these brick and mortar auctions um, up to 82 of them, they are uh, sourcing data, getting picked up by a bunch of different systems and transferred all over the place. But without those core I series systems, that data would not have an origination point or a destination point. So we use it for, as an example, these list of things. You know, reconditioning, check in, uh, bidding, all sorts of information. So why Iron Stream? How are we doing on time? Pretty good. So I'll tell you a little story. Um, I've been with Mannheim and Cox Auto for 16 years. So um, I've gotten to see a lot of different parts of the business and gotten really familiar with the, the Mannheim uh, auction side of the business. Um, and in a previous life, uh, I was actually the manager of the IBM I team. So this data uh, and the use cases are, are pretty near and dear to, to things that I've done in the past, near and dear to my heart. So um, Paul, who currently manages this team, um, came to me one day and said, hey, um, I'm looking at this new product that could make our lives a little simpler and a little more cost effective uh, to get performance data uh, and QSIS opera data off of the IBM I. Would you mind taking a look? Um, I used to work for him so we had a pretty good relationship and he knew I was working for Splunk and he said, oh, by the way, this thing integrates with Splunk. I was like, sweet, more data into Splunk. Um, so, he said, can we possibly use this as a replacement and also we needed to s continue to auto generate incidents in um, our ITSM platform. At the time they had been running it through an existing um, ITOM tool, well, you know, one of the standard five big monitoring tools and sending the data to Remedy and then we had a big team that was contracted to, to manage the iSeries software for us. So they ran off of SLAs from incidents. So we had to make sure that the data coming off of the I-series ended up as incidents so they could get worked uh, by these people that were contractually obligated to work these incidents within an SLA. So I said, great, we've got this snow integration with Splunk. If you can get the data into Splunk through IronStream, we can then correlate it with message IDs that are important to you and we can create incidents based off that. He says, cool, let's do that. So then I went over and talked to my other friend Kazumi who I'd worked with for a long time who was on the monitoring team and I said, hey, you remember when we used to do this thing with Remedy where we create incidents automatically with the tool that we were using? I was like, and he's like, oh yeah. I'm like, do you have like an export of like that whole rule set? He's like, yeah, I got an Excel spreadsheet. I was like, cool. So I grabbed that thing, um, worked with Paul DeLorme's team to make sure that we got the sync sort collector set up. Uh, that's ingested directly with the forwarder like you saw. Uh, we now have the data in Splunk. They can go search it and look for message IDs and find stuff that's anomalous, look at performance data, that's all good. Um, took the spreadsheet that I got from Cosme, made that a lookup in Splunk. Message IDs come in. That get cor gets correlated with the lookup file. And then incidents in snow are automatically generated. We made things a lot more efficient. 
We've integrated with ITSM, we've saved money, and we've also given the IBMI team the ability to manage this lookup file so they can change when tickets need different priorities, they need to go to different groups, they need to get removed altogether. They're already managing the filtering through the iron stream, so let's just empower them to do more of the work on their own. They know it better than anybody else anyway. So the Splunk platform, let them do that. And that kind of looks like this. So we collect the data down in the lower right through iron stream. Uh, we've got a modular input at the same time collecting data from ServiceNow. We've got our lookup that has message IDs that we care about their priorities, uh, any other knowledge information we want to add to them if we want to put additional information in the description of the incident. Um, I'm also taking a hash of a couple different elements of the data. So we can do correlation with snow. So when we create an incident in snow I use that hash as a correlation ID between ServiceNow and Splunk so that we're not creating a hundred incidents when we get a hundred of the same message ID from the same I series in the course of five minutes. So now the ticket just gets updated with the latest information and we don't have a storm of noisy incidents all over the place that frankly the team that's contractually obligated to manage these incidents really don't want anyway. So our second use case. Now how can we take this cool stuff that we did and give it back to the field techs that are from a technology standpoint keeping those field locations alive, right? They've had all this other data on a glass table around, you know, microservices and big applications and network gear and stuff that affects their, their local auction. Let's add some metrics from the IBM. They've never had this correlated before. They've never seen a joint picture of all of the the newer technology that's been integrated with Splunk and now this core IBM IAS 400 that's been around for years and years and years now all in one picture. They can quickly see hey the network's having an issue and the IBM I show it shows an, an availability problem. It's not the AS 400 that's down. It's the network that's causing an issue. That's been really really valuable to them. So the IBM I is no longer a silo only looked at by one team. Visibility can be uh, given to the field, be given back to the AS400 team, anybody else that has access to Splunk can query this data. So I'll talk a minute about uh, kind of the future. Um, the audit data that Chip had talked about, you know, can we use that in ES? I don't, I don't know if anybody's doing that right now, but I, I bet you we could. There is uh, an enormous amount of audit data coming from these uh, AS400s. And a lot of it uh, is not getting looked at and it's kind of an unknown. So we'd love to get that data in and look at it uh, on a near real time basis and see what's happening. Uh, a lot of the user IDs that live on the AS400 also need to be uh, not locked out and not having issues because they run applications. It's really important. Right now we have system level performance, overall CPU and disk and memory. We'd really like to get that down at the job level. Uh, like Chip was saying on the newest release, um, can we figure out what jobs are eating up the most CPU? You know, do we have long running queries, uh, stuff like that that uh, we don't have a whole lot of visibility into today. Also continually adding KPIs. You know, we've just started with putting something on a glass table and adding KPIs as a part of the auction, what more can we do? Let's get real specific around, you know, what jobs are super important and how they're performing right now. Uh, so we're not just looking at an overall availability, we're looking at true low level system performance that could be affecting individual components required for the auction to run. That's all I had. Anybody have any questions? So the forwarder is doing the actual pushing 
to the indexers. So uh, the sync sort collector is running on the, the I series. Uh, see I'm mixing it up. I series, system I, IBM I, I'm just totally guilty of that. So it sits there on the IBM I and then that sends it to the collector. It's run, running on a Linux box that's got a, a UI where they can do the filtering. That basically is writing out files to the file system and then the forwarder picks that stuff up. Yeah, and it, it comes with a bunch of uh, field extractions and everything else automatically. So you don't have to go build that stuff out. Any other questions? Yes, sir. So sync sort is the collector of the I series data. And then on the same collector box, this Linux box that's hosting the collector uh, that's receiving the data from the S400, you also run a Splunk forwarder on that same host. So data gets dropped, Splunk picks it up and indexes it. No. Well, the delay is no different than any delay you would get from a forwarder picking up logs on any host. So, I mean, you're talking milliseconds from the time that it comes from the AS400 till it's indexed. No more questions? Well, thanks for your time. <laughs>